doesn't, uh, he doesn't put himself out to the public. The fact that he's a very introvert person doesn't make it easy for his fans to really know him and get to know him and, and the type of personality that he is. He's an incredibly nice person. He's incredibly polite, very warm. And I think that people who only know him from his fights think that he's stoic and he's cold and he's unfeeling, and that's absolutely not it at all. There are two different sides to Fedor Emelianenko. The one side that people see when he comes into the ring, very stoic, got a job to do, takes care of business, but then the other side where he really is a small town local guy, very simple and very fun loving. I don't think most MMA fans have a clear understanding of how Fedor is because he's so cold in the ring, he's so methodical, he's so unemotional, he doesn't project in the, in the ring, everything is, is how he fights, so his personality is kind of hidden, it doesn't come out a lot you know, when he's in the ring. Fedor is someone who doesn't enjoy the spotlight, really. He's a bit of a recluse. He likes to spend time with his family and is content uh, being in a small town in, in Russia. And he doesn't really strive to uh, get a lot of the stardom and fame that uh, you know really accompanies being a, a, a known commodity in mixed martial arts. I understand that the attention to my person has increased, but I don't give it to him. You know, he's a calm guy. I mean, he, he sits home, he likes to uh, play chess. Uh, there's not a lot of action in Fedor's life, besides, of course, training and fighting. For the rest, he's very to himself and to his family. I think, I think family is very important to Fedor. It's something that he uh, misses most when he's on the road. He wants to be with his children and his wife, and um, it's, uh, it's something I think that gives him peace. Family to Fedor, I would say, is uh, pretty much the number one thing, of course. That's why I think a fighter fights, to support his family, and then if you do it as well as he does, well, then uh, he can support his family really well. Уже просто находиться дома уже большое счастье. Мне нравится и с друзьями проводить время. Мне нравится ходить в храм. Мне нравится общаться с родителями, быть на природе, ходить в баню. Все нравится. Very simple living. Very simple living. It's a, it's a mining town. So it's very, very simple. You know, his mother lives there, his family lives there. Когда Саша стал ходить, он его забирал с садика и тоже с собой водил на дзюдо. В школу пошел, поэтому школу из кут пришлось оставить, хотя он прекрасно рисует. Ну я вообще относительно хорошо учился, поэтому мне все предметы нравились. И математика нравилась, и литература, и в 22 училище на второй курс и первое полугодие его выставляют на конкурс электриков. Он всего полгода там проучился и занял первое место. Училище закончился отличием и досрочно. Где-то на полгода. He's a very intelligent person. He's a very educated person. Um, he loves art. You know, he's very into culture. Um, so there's, there's many other sides to him as a person than just a fighter. Plus, скажем так, я добился того, ради чего переходил сюда. Это what sets Fedor or Emelianenko apart from other fighters is, first off, I think his attitude. Fedor's attitude is, is still the same, you know, even though he's on this huge win streak. Um, in, in my opinion, the best fighter in the world, he, he's, he stayed true to his craft. He still lives in Staryosko, Russia, um, still has the same friends, still trains the same way. I think that really makes Fedor who he is. He doesn't like the spotlight. He would prefer to be in this small town in Russia doing what he loves to do though, fighting. Um, nothing fancy about his training, it's just down and dirty and I think that he stayed so true to his roots that that sets him apart. A lot of the guys that I've seen elevate through the ranks of mixed martial arts fighting, once they get to a certain level, they change a lot of things. They kind of forget where they came from and I think what sets Fedor apart the most is that he stayed true to his roots. Definitely, I would of course, train in any place. В любом городе и России, и мира, но я люблю свой город. Я здесь вырос, у меня здесь родители, мои друзья здесь, мой спортзал здесь, в котором я тоже вырос, тренера. Поэтому зачем я должен менять все это на, скажем так, большие города, где мне не уютно и ну это не мое. Я люблю маленькие тихие города. Я люблю Старый Оскол.
you don't have to change your surroundings. What is what works for you works for you. And that and living in Stereosco and training the way he trains works for Fedor, obviously. He trains in gyms that, that are beat up. They're not fancy gyms, you know, there's no plasma screens and no fruit smoothie bars in the corner. I mean, he trains in gyms that are beat up, but it just shows, it shows hard work. And his coaches are, are guys that he's very close with. They're like, it's like a family in, in Stereosco, Russia. They're running through the woods. They're swinging on like monkey bars. I mean, the, the training is so primitive, but it works. And that's what I think is so unique and important about Fedor. He doesn't change his regimen. It's the same wherever he goes. That's why he's just, he's just a true athlete. He loves to train. Uh, for him, it's not a job to train. It's, it's not something he has to push himself to do. Um, he loves to train. But the funny thing is, Fedor takes classes with the general public, and the first time I walked in, there's a 10-year-old kid jumping rope and running around the gym in the same class Fedor's in. He, he's that kind of guy that he doesn't think he's special, very humble. He goes in there and does his workout. Строить карьеру и строить легенды, быть легендами. Я об этом совершенно не думаю. Но запомнить, наверное, нормальным человеком, обычным человеком. Most of his, well, probably all of his opponents never will see that side of Fedor Emelianenko. The one that smiles beyond that ring smirk. The one that does normal things beyond the superhuman punishment he dishes out while doing his business in the ring. He is as mentally tough as he is physically strong, capable of waiting patiently for that blink of an eye moment to end it all. A submission, a knockout. Whatever he sees in that split second. Two perfect examples, his fights with Hung Man Choi and Andre Arlovsky. Different styles from both fighters who thought they had their chance. So it seemed. Dutch. Matt Lindland, the Dutch. last man to go in against Fedor, told us it's important last week. He thinks it's going to be a first round decision, one way or the other for Fedor. Most everyone else picking him as Fedor shoots in on the big man. And Choi takes him down. Fedor giving up about 130 pounds here. 237 to 366, Ken. That's a huge difference. I don't care who you are. And look at the arm of Choi. It engulfs the head of Emilienko. You can see the head difference, too, the size and the difference he has. Look at look how small Fedor looks underneath him. Look at Choi's working with his little brother. He's got Fedor it's in. Going for the arm. Leaving it out of that, that was tight. I thought it was over. Look how tight that armbar was. Fedor perhaps a little impressed himself there by Choi. Showing some redness around the face. And you can see there the welts taking a couple of good licks from Hawkman Choi. He's trying to do a sambo trip, he can't do it because he's just so big. Every punch is huge. Even the peppery shots by Troy, they're huge punches because of the size. And you can see, just look at look at the mammoth.